Well, welcome to the webinar of our studies, uh, Actuarial Science, Econometrics and Operations Research. I'm Maurice Costa. I'm the program director of the first year, and uh, I brought a student with me. Yeah, hi, I'm Stina, and I'm a first year student in um, Econometrics and Operations Research. And, um, well, throughout my last years in school, I went to England, but I'm originally from Germany. So we would like to uh, give you an idea what the studies actual science, econometrics and operations research is about. Um, there will be some content, so I will discuss uh, some uh, general information about the studies and um, tell you something more detailed because it, these are technical, uh, uh, well, technical areas, so what are the differences, what are the focal, focal points uh, within these studies and um, yeah, discuss it and maybe uh, you can tell something about your experiences yes. uh, so far. Um, so, the general information, I will tell you something about the professional uh, perspectives and, uh, and the content. So what, is a, what does a program uh, look like? Um, what are the requirements? Uh, what do you need to do to enroll a program? Um, first of all, the professional perspectives. Well, actually, the, uh, there's only one thing I can say. Uh, it's just excellent. So once you have a degree in uh, in either actuarial science or econometrics, the professional expect, uh, perspectives are, are really good. So uh, there are three pluses, as you can see on the screen, for finding a job. Uh, usually, uh, people, uh, they are working uh, during their studies, before finalizing even the, the, their studies. And uh, what is maybe more important is that they, the, 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 the uh, satisfaction at their job is, is, is enormous. And, well, that it comes at a good salary, it's only uh, a big advantage. So um, there's no uh, uh, reason not to study if you're looking at, uh, at, at career perspectives. So what are these uh, working areas? Where do you find the people? Where do you find econometricians? Well, basically, uh, econometricians and actuarial scientists, uh, uh, they, they are working with large, da large data sets. So you will find them in areas, uh, um, in business areas, where there's a lot of data. So you, you can think of banks, insurance companies, pension funds, and, uh, but also bigger, the bigger firms in the industry. They are always in the, uh, 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 the econometricians are always high in demand. Also, a government, non profit sector, you'll find econometricians, uh, consultancy, and uh, well, if you uh, um, opt for uh, uh, an academic, uh, academic career, you can also do it. Um, well, here's just an overview. You might know some logos that are presented here. I, I must say that this is more the, the, the Dutch co corporate world. So you see large firms like uh, ING, a bank, and uh, uh, KLM. Uh, maybe you flew with, uh, with them. Um, so the program of study, um, we have a bachelor of three years. And the first year is called the propedeutic year. And um, um, we have a, a joint second year. So all the studies, uh, whatever you choose, actuarial science or econometrics, in the first two years you get a solid basis, basically in the techniques that are used to uh, be able, uh, that, that you need to, to, uh, uh, in your profession. So in the third year, actually you split off. So you, you specialize, so you will uh, 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 go into the Bachelor of Actuarial Science and you get uh, specific courses, and uh, you have a Bachelor in Econometrics and OR. I must say that OR is, is, uh, fit, will be phased out. That this year you can still go for uh, operations research, but will phase out slowly uh, years after. So after completion of, um, of your Bachelor, you might opt for uh, an additional year in, uh, and, and do a Master in Actuarial Sciences or a Master in Econometrics, um, well, you could do both. You could combine uh, these masters if you have uh, in the third year, as we will see in a minute, you will have electives, uh, uh, so where you can freely choose your uh, courses. And if you uh, make a kind of dual program of uh, actuarial science courses, 
together with econometrics courses, you could also qualify for the master in econometrics, although you uh, was, were in the Bachelor of Actuarial Science. And this also holds in the GAN first. So you also can do, with a Bachelor in econometrics, you might go to the Master of Actuarial Science. Okay. Um, so here's year one. Uh, we have uh, a structure which is uh, called 884. So we have two semesters with uh, two blocks of eight weeks and one block of, uh, uh, of four weeks. And uh, as you will see, we kind of have a, have, have a mixed program. So we have a technical course and uh, aside we have an economics course. Like in the first block, you start off with mathematics. Yeah? So I'm a math uh, professor. You will, you will see me in this course. Um, we start off with calculus, so the basic you learn the basic techniques that you will definitely need. And uh, parallel, you follow the course of macroeconomics. So in the second period, we have microeconomics, again, an uh, uh, economics course, and probability and statistics, which is very uh, uh, important uh, in our studies. In the third block, you will see that you get an introduction in econometrics, so you get a first, uh, 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 you get a, a well, a shallow look into the field of econometrics. Well, this continues in semester two. You get finance and mathematics two, programming, numerical analysis, and again probability and statistics, and you round off the year with the introduction in actuarial science and operations research. So you see that it's, um, uh, it's quite technical. You, see, you get a lot of mathematics and a lot of probability and statistics. And, uh, well, for some people, this is of interest and people like it. So did you like it? Probability or the whole? The, well, the program. What, what do you think of the program? How, 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 did, how did the first year go? It's actually, it's actually quite nice because specifically in the first block, I found that you had this, like, massive section of maths, which is, like, pretty pure maths and then at the same time you got like my macro which was sort of like balancing it out and giving you like an introduction into what economics is so that was like a really nice mixture and that keeps on going in the first year as well so yeah. okay that so. did you think uh, uh that there were some hard parts I think um amongst most people in the first year calculus is perceived to be quite hard um, and at the same time, a lot of people tend to uh, focus on the mathematical courses, so calculus um, or probability, and then sort of neglect the more um, economical parts. So I think in the whole, like, the whole structure of the program makes it quite challenging and like quite demanding in terms of workload, etc. So um, this is a demanding program. Uh, it's all, uh, all been said. So, well. Uh, this might be of interest to you. Um, so, in summary, I, I listed the 10 courses. Well, we give each course, course six credits. Well, it's a kind of European standard how much uh, the workload of a course is. So, a year has 60 um, uh, credits. And you will see that actually 18 go to mathematics courses and 12 to statistics. And the other uh, half of the credits go to economics, 18 and 12 for orientation. So, but these are also, again, a kind of technical uh, uh, courses. So it's a kind of challenging program in the sense that uh, you should expect that you do a lot of theory. So you learn a lot of techniques that, you, uh, that we will build on in the, in the, in the second and, and the third year. And uh, actually, it's quite demanding. Um, we have a binding study advice, which means that uh, you need to uh, score uh, 84 credits, which means that actually um, you need to pass for, uh, uh, for eight courses or more. And if you don't, then uh, the studies ends at the, at the first year. Um, it's demanding in the sense that uh, we have well, we have a mixture of uh, international students and, and Dutch students, and we see that we have a positive uh, uh, binding study advice around 60%. And it's a little bit higher for the international group, a little bit less for the Dutch group. So, um, year two. We, uh, well, the, the, the first year is basically about basic techniques and the second year 
we kind of uh, slowly specialize. You still get some mathematics courses like uh, linear algebra. You get a deepening of your li linear algebra in the first year, and you get a deepening of your calculus knowledge in uh, math four, and you get a, a additional probability and statistics courses. But you also see, like in block one, you see life insurance mathematics. So this is uh, truly an actual science. Um, uh, uh, belonging to the actuarial science program. Um, in the second semester, you see econometrics courses, which is actually directly uh, into the Bachelor of Econometrics. Uh, risk, uh, risk theory, again, is a course in uh, actuarial science. And you see that in block three and block six, you have more practical uh, courses like optimization, you learn how to optimize and how to program. And in block six, you have an empirical project where you carry out your first uh, research, basically. So you are in year two, I guess. I'm in year one. Uh, year one still. <laughs> oh, <that is. laughs> in the third block of year one. Oh, year one. Then you will see me in the, in the <laughs> in coming uh, two weeks. <laughs> I didn't know. Okay. So year three. Uh, in econometrics, you have uh, several um, uh, uh, possibilities. So in the first semester, um, we opened the first semester up in a sense that you could do a, a minor somewhere else. Um, you could do a minor in programming or you could go studying abroad. Well, for international people, uh, the Netherlands is, of course, already abroad, but many Dutch students, uh, they want to go for instance, to Australia or to Hong Kong or whatever, to partner universities where we have agreements with. and uh, Or you can stay here and choose from a, a restricted uh, choice set of courses. So in a second semester, um, you, you are basically required back in the sense that um, you see as of block five, you get uh, the bachelor a thesis seminar where you finalize your um, your bachelor through a thesis. Okay, um, so if you do not pick a, a, a minor or you're not planning to study abroad, then this is basically the structure. So you have mathematical and empirical finance in block one, and you have courses related to big data, uh, introduction machine learning and data preparation in block two and block three. And uh, still there's a, 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 you see that usually in the, in the first two years we had two courses at the same time in the same uh, teaching period. Well, here again, it's the same thing. Uh, only now you can choose from a list of electives or you can do an internship somewhere. Yeah, uh, maybe you know, but uh, Amsterdam is very close to the uh, financial district uh, 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 of Amsterdam, and uh, you, many people uh, might opt for an internship there. Um, in the second semester, and that's what I've been telling before, you have to be uh, basically the uh, big part is devoted to the thesis. Um, you can also, well, this is uh, 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 this year, you can still opt for operations research. Well, these are typical uh, courses for in in operations research, but uh, again, you can have uh, can can choose from a set of electives, and of course, you could uh, could pick them from the economics uh, econometrics part. Okay, actuarial science is the same thing. Only you have uh, one course in block one, mathematics and empirical finance. Um, it seems to block. Uh, the possibility to go abroad, but that's not correct because usually this type of course will be offered by also the international uh, uh, partners and th that we have. Yeah. So again, in the second semester is largely devoted to research seminar and finalizing your thesis. So this is ba basically the, the programs that we offer over three years. Um, Important is that, uh, yeah, I, I explained already that actually these studies are quite technical. So this means also that you should, uh, that, that there are entry requirements. So for the Dutch people, 
uh, you will need to have a, a, a finalized VWO and Wiskunde B, so Mathematics B. And outside the Netherlands, well, the criteria are different because we cannot summarize all the studies that you can do abroad, but we have a lot of uh, uh, expertise there and you can contact us uh, through the website. Um, important is that although we are in the economics faculty, that, you, that we don't require any knowledge about economics. Yeah, so in the first year you will get anything, everything that you uh, need to know. Uh, but mathematics is the most important thing. So uh, if we are unsure about the level of mathematics that you, uh, uh, that you have, um, tests can be part of the admission. Uh, so um, that's what we do. So also you need to contact us if, if there's doubt. If we have doubt, we will contact you and ask you to do, to, uh, do a test. Um, this year it will be obligatory to and uh, compulsory to um, uh, participate in online UVA matching, which is actually a way for you to find out whether these studies are something for, uh, for you. So what we offer you is a week of uh, study. You can actually, uh, uh, you are required to participate. Uh, this is all done online. You get uh, clips, you get uh, presentations online. And uh, uh, after the week, you will get a test uh, on mathematics, uh, just practical, uh, uh, just to see where, you, where, where your standings are. And uh, you uh, will get a, a small test about the specific econometrics part that we uh, uh, offer. Uh, important to, to tell you, it's not, um, uh, it's not, the participation is important. So we will not uh, uh, say to you, well, you, you cannot enroll because the test that you made for the matching uh, did not go very well. So the entry requ requirements are something different uh, than the matching protocol. Okay. Um, now I turn uh, um, shortly to what the studies are actually uh, about. Um, so there's a little bit of content so that you understand uh, the differences in the, in the, in the fields. Um, I'll start off with uh, actuarial science. Uh, you want to do econometrics, right? So yes. it's uh, <laughs> something that you might learn now what, what it's actually uh, about. So um, actuarial science is about insurance mathematics and risk management. Um, and it, it covers several uh, cases, like um, we have a, a growing concern about climate change. And uh, climate change, for instance, uh, brings a lot of uh, uh, has a lot has a lot of aspects, and especially natural disasters come along with climate change. So uh, heavy storms, etc., are occurring more frequently, and um, they cause, of course, a lot of damage. And that's where the uh, where the where the actuarial uh, people uh, uh, pop up, because um, they need to calculate the probability that uh, these extreme events can occur. And again, when is an extreme event? What is the impact in financial terms? Yeah, and so yeah, you run a financial risk and can you insure this? And if so, on, under what price and what conditions? And also, uh, they are in the middle of a debate between the public and private sector because you may see uh, that actually the climate uh, concerns us all. So why should uh, private people pay for the full cost of the damage done to them by, by weather conditions? Uh, shouldn't it be the government or other institutions? Yeah. So these are um, uh, kind of challenging uh, problems, uh, which are uh, very uh, well. Uh, these are the problems that we face uh, uh, daily on a daily basis, basically. Um, I'm just looking at the screen to see if there are some questions coming in, because you are invited to ask questions. You can interrupt us any moment that you like. Um, if there are no questions, then I'll just proceed with, uh, with the following slide. Um, I'm, a, I'm a teacher. You can ask me uh, uh, direct your questions about 
uh, a more a teacher perspective, but we also have the experience of a student. Uh, um, uh, so you might question anything that you like. Um, I don't see anything yet, so we'll just wait for questions. Um, another topic in, in, uh, for, uh, for people, for, for actuarial people, is aging. So uh, people are living longer and, uh, the, the, uh, and uh, there's less babies being born. So our society ages. So you might question, well, what is an actuarial? Uh, 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 why uh, is, is, he, is he interested in, in this problem? Well, we have a big insurance. One of the biggest insurance that we actually have are, uh, are the pensions. So after we turn uh, 65 or 67, depending on where you live in the world, um, people are insured and get a pension. Um, but of course, these pensions are... Uh, 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 well, they, they, these are they, these are savings, but they have changing words, right? So um, people pay in now for other people to uh, uh, um, to, to be able to get get their pensions. So the questions for an actuary and a risk manager are: How do I design a robust pension system? So if I give out all the money that is present uh, presently in then, of course, for the future uh, generations, there won't be anything. Um, but, of course, these, these, these savings that we all uh, make, they are um, uh, kind of fluctu uh, the, the worth of these savings is fluctuating. So how can we be sure that we can pay out the people when they are old? So this is a, a very uh, big uh, issue for an actuary. Uh, actuary, you also find them in financial markets. Um, uh, why? Well, I told you that that, that actually uh, uh, actuarial science is also about risk management. Well, here is the risk management part. Uh, the financial industry is, is bigger and more complex than ever, and uh, financial markets are interconnected. So if uh, things go wrong at Wall Street, probably you, you'll find the same aspects in Tokyo and wherever else in the world. So a question for the actuary is, what are the effects for a sharp decrease of, uh, uh, in, 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 in the stock market? Or uh, uh, what kind of effects can we uh, expect in the other parts of a financial market? So uh, how likely is it, for instance, that a crisis will propagate from one market to another? Um, yeah, so this is um, something that is really interested. So you will find our people also in financial markets. So now I turn to econometrics. I will just um, read. Um, okay, there's a question coming in. Um, somebody's asking. Um, somebody's telling that apparently econometrics is very difficult. I understand uh, mathematics B, uh, and I like I like mathematics and economics. Um, the question is, what makes this bachelor difficult? Can you, could you say something to this? I think for most people, it's the workload in total because you're new to university on one hand, so nobody actually forces you to go to any lectures anymore. You really sort of like need to get yourself out of bed and join the lectures. And then at the same time, what you hear in lectures is probably going to be like really complex and in most cases overwhelming. And so, yeah, you chose a really difficult study and you're also new at uni and that's all a little bit like overwhelming. And yeah, in general, it's just, um, I'd say, or my experiences with all the people I've met here is that those people who like maths and get themselves to sit down and do revision, they will get through the, the program. Like, as long as you're hard, willing to work hard, um, that's pretty much the most important thing you need. So you say it's basically the motivation that drives 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, good results. Because it's basically. it's difficult to say that maths is the is the difficult is the most difficult part of the program because that's like really different for everyone. So for me, for example, um, the economics part was a lot more new stuff. So I had to work a little bit harder on that. But um, in general, I'd say both of these areas come together and they create a huge amount of workload. And that's yeah, that can be quite overwhelming. But um, if if you like uh, maths and uh, yeah. That is definitely, I think, one of the most important things. If you like maths, then this program is probably like a relatively good choice. Yeah. So uh, if you uh, if you if you like maths, if you like technique, um, then then is something this is something worthwhile for you. So uh, and also it's it's motivating, right? So you learn a lot of new techniques, and if you like. Uh, mathematics, this will, will withhold you uh, from from learning it, yeah, because you have to work. So uh, what we usually see is that in high school, every everything goes smooth, and some people hardly have to, do, hardly are studying uh, at their homes. But no, now you cannot do this anymore because we pick those people who are interested in mathematics, and we offer them uh, the difficulty that they that we think they can manage. So it's a new lineup. And the people who are not interested in mathematics are basically gone. So this is maybe one of the reasons that it's uh, challenging, yeah. because we are focusing on the level of people that we get in. And if uh, when we think, well, in four years' time, you really uh, 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 need to know your profession, then this is kind of uh, 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 what is asked for. We need to. Uh, have a higher tempo and you will see uh, the, the the first half year might be hard but uh, uh, when you get through then hardly anyone uh, drops out anymore so and so as of the second year we uh, the, the first year is selective but actually the, the second and the third year not uh, hardly yeah so I don't know if there's questions about that but uh, um, Okay, I get a following question. I don't know if I can answer this. I have a Dutch passport, but grew up in South Africa. Do I need a Burger Service number to qualify? Uh, I think I have a I have a friend who um, or okay. two friends. So one of them one of them has a German passport and she's from South Africa as well. The other one has a Dutch passport and is from Zimbabwe. And I believe both of them just like qualified as regular European citizens and they just study at the usual European tuition fee. So they, as, as far as I'm concerned, there's no other obstacle. But if, you, if you're not sure, you always can contact uh, our, our admission office. They will know this, definitely. Um, well, let me proceed with uh, econometrics. What is econometrics uh, about? Well, it's econometrics. Uh, yeah, so it's measuring in economics. Um, what it, what what is different? Like like you you, you know that uh, that in physics you also uh, also measure. You also have experiments and you measure things. Why is it different to measure in economics? Well, actually, economics is a huge. A system where you can measure once and then the world has changed again. So basically so, uh, people would say well n is one, you have only one observation and that, that's what you need to get your uh, 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 conclusions from. Um, what econ econometrics is about is to um, summarize information and knowledge in models. Um, so you get a feel for how reality works then uh, you try to build a model. Um, and if you really understand, then this model will fit to your data. Yeah? And if you have a good fit to your data, then you might be able to forecast using the model. So you, uh, uh, for, for instance, development of loans, of development of derivatives or whatever, uh, all kinds of things you can, uh, if you think you have a, have, a, have a good understanding of what is going on, you build a model, and using this model, you try to forecast, and sometimes you have a good model and you can forecast really good, and sometimes it's, it's not possible. Um, but if you can forecast, then you can also calculate different regimes. So if I do A, then this happens. If I do B, something else happens. But you can compare the outcome. And if you can compare the outcome, then you might be able to decide. 
So actually, econometrics is also about decision uh, making. So this is what is the uh, intrinsic uh, uh, idea of econometrics, and uh, especially that you do it in economics. But of course, the techniques that you learn are not really restricted to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to be applied in e economics only. You could also uh, uh, support uh, a climate uh, research team and uh, use your models to uh, to check whether their models uh, that they are working with are are correct or correctly specified. So you can do a lot with the techniques that you've learned here, also in science. Uh, one example in econometrics is uh, marketing. Uh, a company raises its budget for advertising with uh, some amount, X euro, and uh, can you, given the data that you have, can you um, estimate what are the expected uh, extra revenues? Yeah. So here you have clearly uh, a problem because you might uh, you might want to spend a hundred euro, and maybe you want want to spend a million euro, but this might not be effective. So you need to decide between the two uh, possibilities, and uh, usually there's a lot of information gathered by the marketing people so that you actually are capable of uh, decide to, capable uh, of, of of making a decision. Um, Something else is uh, that's very popular nowadays is big data. So uh, since now uh, our computers and servers are not restrictive in the amount of data that we can actually uh, uh, gather and uh, and store, um, we have so much data that it's hard to to know what what, what you can actually do with it. So. Um, um, this is the field of big data. Econometricians are uh, uh, in the econometrics program. You learn how to deal with big data sets and how to learn from them. So, can we find patterns in this big data? Um, um, so, you have big big data analytics. It, uh, it deals with high volume, high velocity, uh, a lot of information assets. Um, and uh, it's focused on uh, on, on cost-effective inno innovative uh, information processing. Yeah, you, you might have just too much information, and you need to distill what you need to know from this data. Um, well, it's 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 related to data science. Data science is more about uh, operational uh, uh, things about data, about data cleansing, preparation, analysis. Um, but the scope of the techniques is, is the same. You, they, they try to use it in, in, in business, in science, uh, anywhere where you uh, might learn something from your data and uh, where you have a, a huge piles of information. Um, I slowly turn to, did you read the questions? Yeah, if there's a cap on the number of applicants. Uh, no, there's no cap up, uh, uh, on the number of applicants. So if you uh, apply and you fulfill the requirements, then... Um, you will uh, uh, you will just enroll the program. Program. There's no cap, and there will won't be a cap uh, for the coming years, I believe. So if you are in doubt whether or not to come this year or next year, there won't be uh, any difference. Um, okay, this is asked twice, so I hope that this is a clear answer for you. Um, so here is why I uh, myself use uh, econometrics, well, a very easy econometrics model, actually a t type of techniques that you learn in the first year. So what you're looking at is uh, actually, um, I look at the tests for matching and I compare it with the results for mathematics. So basically we try to, uh, through the UVA matching, we try to give you an advice whether or not something is uh, might be suitable for you. So what we expect is that if your uh, 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 your grade for the matching is very high, then we actually expect you to have a high grade for mathematics as well. And the converse as well. So if you have a very low matching result, then we hope that we gave you a good advice. So uh, then this also should relate to a low uh, mathematics one. Uh, uh, result. Well, here in this uh, in this box plot, you see a lot of uh, dots. Well, each dot uh, is a combination of a matching result and a, ma a mathematics result. Um, 
there, there are several students on one dot. So, but you might, if you close your eyes a little bit, you might see a kind of cloud of, of data points uh, which goes from uh, the lower left part to the upper right part. So you might get the idea that maybe there's a positive relationship, uh, but it's not clear because it's, it looks like a cloud of, of, um, of, 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 of points and there's no really a, a direction of this uh, cloud. So what we do in econometrics is that we assume uh, uh, some uh, relations. So here we have a linear relation. So Wi is the mathematics grade and Mi is the matching grade. Uh, we assume that this is uh, Wi is C plus B times Mi. So there's a linear relationship uh, between them. And we look uh, how good this model is compared to the data that we observe. Well, in the first year, you will learn that actually here we are looking at some uh, uh, statistics, uh, some, some estimates that we can make. Uh, we get in red, you get uh, certain coefficients. And if you look at uh, right hand side in the blue, you get a, get a p-value. And the smaller it is, the better uh, the model uh, gives the, uh, uh, a true description of uh, what might be the case. So here we see actually, since the coefficient is 0.43, which means that the B that we have in our model is positive, which means that actually we have a positive effect. So indeed, we are doing the right thing. I'm happy as a mathematician because it shows that um, actually the matching gives you a proper idea, understanding of what, uh, uh, what, what will be your challenges. So if you have a very high matching rate, then you're just excellent for our studies. So how did you find you 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 just uh, you're doing, in the middle of this right exactly I'm <laughs> doing yeah I'm doing a regression analysis as well <laughs> yeah so this is a very easy uh, regression yeah. analysis it's just one uh, uh, two variables basically so seems significant though <laughs> it, uh, it's significant uh, here I have a more uh, elaborate model which is actually used to um, uh, explain the difference in salary. Uh, of people uh, working and, and there's a huge data set of, of Dutch uh, uh, people uh, like if they are male, if they are living at home, what are their grades, how high are their grades, the region, region where they come from in the Netherlands and you see the effects on the salary. Uh, it's the same kind of model only now we have B1 until B9. We have a lot of variables in this uh, that we actually use in this model. Um, and you see, well, under B9, the, uh, what, what, what you actually study is one of the biggest determinants of, uh, of your salary. So if you study political science, it has a negative impact on your uh, salary. And if you study econometrics, uh, there's definitely a positive inf uh, influence. So uh, in our... Um, studies you learn uh, to cope with these kind of models. So did you look at these kind of models with yes. so many variables? I looked at uh, whether obesity has a negative effect on earnings, which is actually only significant for women. So And not for men? Not for men. Okay. That's not super. much anyways. <laughs> okay. So here you see where, where, where practice... Uh, uh, um, well, after half a year you're uh, uh, doing this kind of practical uh, analysis. Um, I have to read something. I cannot read it. Uh, um, I think it's a question about the skills and tutoring. So what that entails? Uh, in skills and, and, and tutoring. Yeah. The, uh, it's in the first year. For in the first uh, uh, teaching period, uh, we offer this as um, uh, we try to... Well, okay, I have to step back. Um, the people that are coming in are very heterogeneous uh, as, as far as mathematics is concerned. So we try to help people with their mathematics. So you get additional help over there. You learn how to write. What do we expect from you? Um, uh, there's a little bit planning. How do, we, uh, uh, how do you make a weekly plan? Uh, because it's not, you're not at home. And, and as you might know, Amsterdam is a wild city. So there's many distractions. And we hope that you can, st uh, can uh, make your own plan and stick to it. So this is just uh, um, 
what we uh, mean by uh, skills and tutoring. And these are peers, um, they're not actually your tutors. So these are uh, students or former students that are actually helping you with it. So they, these are real uh, life experts in this sense. And um, You also have another skills sort of part in the second blog, which is mostly about essay techniques. Um, so that's quite yeah. important in our course as well. And, and uh, well, basic uh, word processes, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. uh, you learn about Excel, et cetera, et cetera. So we, uh, you, you have to be able to report later on, and we don't want you to use a WordPad anymore. So basically, the, this is what, uh, what we do. We offer you, in a sense, what, what is sometimes called 21st century <laughs> skills. So you get your uh, digital uh, 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 diploma in, 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 in a sense. Yeah. So these are all standards. And in the first year, you learn the standards, basically what we want from yeah. you. It's yeah, it's mostly also supporting of specifically one subject. So in the first block, the skills will mostly focus on calculus. In the second block, it's more focused on microeconomics. So, yeah. And you had to write something on, a, on an economic exactly, topic, right? Exactly, exactly. So. so we did more mathematical stuff in our microeconomics, um, which was quite interesting. And then we looked at like more writing about it and um, looking at the economic theory. And then that's what we sort of did in skills. Okay, very important question, very interesting, because I, I promised to tell something about tutoring, but, but this, is, uh, this is meant by, by it. And also, uh, we use the tutoring indirectly in the sense that when there are problems, uh, students tend to go to their peers uh, 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 more easily than, than, uh, than staff. So I'm in, I'm, I'm in contact with, with our students, uh, with our tutors, and uh, if there are problems, if you have personal problems or whatever uh, problems of any kind, then we might help you in this way. Um, There's another question about a high school. Another Hold question on. about high school. I have a high school diploma and the additional requirement which are listed on your website. Oh, this is too technical, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So I, 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 I propose that if, when you have a very technical question that, that you uh, contact our admissions office because they will know um, uh, what are uh, the, the country-specific uh, entry requirements. Um, okay, I will just proceed with some that's, content. Is there something else? I think there's one more right on the bottom. What time of computer system? What type of computer system? I guess that it should be. Do you recommend for students? Well, that's uh, a completely uh, uh, what, what you like the most. So we have people, uh, many many students using Apple, and uh, many students also use other uh, Hewlett Packard or whatever uh, Windows system. Um, that's uh, uh, oh, the things that we use are, are in this sense uh, platform. Uh, are indifferent for, 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 for the platforms. You can get your software for both uh, a Mac and a PC. But the uni has really good computers. So like for the really important work, for the actual programming, you will mostly use the uh, university's computers. So. But it might be in the future that uh, we will use more uh, bring your own device uh, mm -hmm. uh, policy. So uh, I, th I think everybody wants to have a kind of machine and and choose the uh, the right one. Well, it's just what you prefer yourself. So this is what 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 I can say, right? I mean, I see people working on different. Yeah, machines, most people so. most people have Macs. Yeah, but that's just because they are very transportable. So this is uh, one of the basic reasons. Okay, um, something else in econometrics, a different problem. Uh, can we forecast share prices? Well, here you see the uh, the uh, the AEX X. The, that's uh, it's the uh, the Dutch uh, um, uh, how you call it in, on a, on a burst plane. It's a, it's a, uh, an index, and you see it from uh, we we follow data from uh, the beginning of the 80s until almost 2000, and you see a, a steep increase of uh, 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 of this in index and the question is can we uh, project uh, this increase in the future well think for a moment whether this should hold or not well 
uh, actually it's a very uh, specific time that actually we had an internet bubble over there. So in 2000, 2001, uh, the index crashed basically because it went down uh, to almost two over there. Um, okay. Uh, another part of econometrics is more devoted to economics, so you can do uh, b uh, both things. So you can, you can really go into technique and, and data delving, and, but you can also uh, choose a path that is more in direction of economics. Uh, I myself, I'm a, uh, I did my PhD in, uh, in uh, game theory, which is actually more in the economics direction. And um, the, the topics there are uh, uh, the functioning of markets. Is it good to have a market? Are there cartels in a market? Uh, do we see a monopolistic behavior? How to intervene? How to avoid uh, uh, creation of monopolies? Uh, something else is auction design. So, you know, that everything goes through Amazon, eBay, whatever, and many things are auctioned. And all these platforms use a very specific auction format. Well, this is something that you might study for. Uh, what kind of auction formats are uh, ideal in some way, most efficient for seller or buyer, um, etc. Um, but also we have a very, uh, uh, well, our research group is a center for nonlinear dynamics in economic and finance. What we actually do, we see the, we have a kind of non-standard view on economics. We look at the economic system as a dynamical system with, uh, 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 and we look at, uh, at, uh, um, uh, things that might occur in economics. Uh, uh, when you look around, everything seems to be chaotic. But we, uh, 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 our research theme is basically showing that even very simple structures may give rise to uh, uh, kind of uh, erratic uh, 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 patterns. So actually, the economic uh, 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 reality might be very simple, but uh, you might not see it in the, through the data. So this is one of the topics that you may specialize in, but it's only in the third year. Um, very nice area of research where everything come, uh, comes together, so mathematical economics, econometrics and actuarial science, is a network analysis. So what we see here in this picture is a financial system. So every dot basically is a bank, and we draw a line between two banks if, there's, uh, if they have a financial position. Uh, 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 related to each other. So if bank A lends money to bank B, then you will see this is a line in the graph. So we all know what happened in 2008 that actually the financial system cr cracked down, right? I mean, um, just while uh, uh, some banks went default, it causes a lot of problem uh, in, in this financial uh, system because all these banks are interconnected. So in the right-hand side, you see uh, the type of analysis that we perform. So we let a bank go default, and then look what happens if we play this around for, for a little while. And then you see the uh, 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 basically the, the, the yellow dots are the banks that are default after a while. So in this sense, you may uh, uh, share, use your knowledge about uh, 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 risk measurement or risk sharing and uh, risk analysis from actuarial science. Um, you use actually econometrics to create the network, and then you use ideas from a mathematical economics to study for stability of such a network. So here, uh, but this is a very relevant field uh, nowadays. That's another question. There's another question, yes. of course. About whether you need any um, pre-knowledge about coding? No, you don't need any pre-knowledge uh, pre about uh, programming. Um, we start in the first year, you have a course uh, which is actually in period five, which is a mathematical analysis of the numerical analysis and programming. Uh, nowadays, we, we, um, we program in uh, using MATLAB, but we start from scratch. So basically, you don't need to bring anything uh, there. Uh, but of course, if you have some knowledge already, it's it's only welcome. Okay, um, I'm almost done. Uh, okay, so here is one of the last slides. Uh, uh, operations research. What is operations research about? 
Well, it's about mathematical modeling of, of practical problems. So uh, these are problems in logistics, supply chain management, traffic control systems, and um, yeah, check-in planning at airports, anything that has to do with planning, scheduling, etc., etc., uh, belongs to the field of operations research. Yeah, you see a tom-tom, so routing uh, your, your vehicle from A to B is one of the most renowned uh, uh, examples where operations research has played a, uh, a huge role. Um, okay, um, why should you study at the UVA? Maybe I ask you. <laughs> you shouldn't. <laughs> 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 um, I think as a, I'm just going to speak for international people now yeah, because yeah. Um, Dutch people always sort of have like different reasons for that. Um, so first thing is UFA specifically has a really, really good reputation in the whole of Europe and I believe in the whole of the world. So obviously there are Amsterdam and there's also there's Amsterdam and Delft and Rotterdam, but specifically, for example, in Britain, they love hearing that you have a bachelor from UFA. So that was, for example, that was quite a reason for me. And the second thing is also when I sort of went through to a couple of universities in, um, in the Netherlands, I thought that Amsterdam was just incredibly nice. <laughs> the city is like, I, I don't know, I couldn't, I couldn't think of a better student city because it's pretty much a capital city put into a really, really tiny area. So there's lots going on and you can just like be everywhere by bike within like 10 minutes. So it's actually the ideal student city as well. Okay. <laughs> this is a... Uh, uh, um well, this is life experience. Uh, I can add that actually um, within the Netherlands, uh, this is the only university actually uh, uh, focusing on actuarial science, even in the bachelor. So uh, this is another unique right. position of our more technical position of our studies, besides that it's a nice city. Um, it's also really international. The university is really international. And, and I think Amsterdam uh, as a whole is yeah. also very international. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I I think one in three people on the street will talk English. Yes. Who speak English? Yeah. Uh, um, so this is nothing uh, uh, to be hesitant about. So uh, the Dutch are, are pretty much uh, internationally oriented. So uh, this is a pro uh, probably why expats uh, are are feeling really at home in in, in Amsterdam, and we have many expats uh, uh, expats here. Um, what is actually important also for the studies is that we have a strong relationship with practice. So we are very close to the uh, main financial industry. So the, the, the biggest companies, they all have their uh, uh, headquarters uh, in, the, in the vicinity of Amsterdam. So actually, when it comes to internships, etc., etc., in the, the third year, you're living on top of these uh, uh, organizations. So it's very easy to come by. And also we have a very active, uh, the VSAE is a student uh, organization. They keep, uh, they are in very close contact uh, with, uh, with this uh, corporate, uh, uh, with the corporate world. So that is actually very easy to, uh, to get a job afterwards because you, they know you and they want you and you know them. Yeah, so we have markets where they uh, present themselves. And did you join one of these days? I, I didn't join the days, but I was going to say that the VSAE is, um, that's quite like a specific thing for, econometri or for econometrics and the whole course as well, because that is pretty much the only course in the entire faculty that has that like strong sort of a student association. And it, like you join it and you'll be able to join loads of different de de um, events. It's actually like very supportive. Um, something that I, well, didn't touch, but um, um, maybe you're interested in, in the size of our program. I think uh, now we have uh, around 160 Dutch students and about 100, uh, 120 international students. So these are actually rather small groups. So uh, I think you have the experience that you yeah. know uh, many yeah. people in a very short time. I think right? a lot of people have... I mean, yeah, the course is really difficult, so a lot of people have dropped out, sadly. Um, so I think in most of the lectures, we tend to be 60 people, and that's just incredibly small, which also makes the lecturers quite, um, 
engaging and interactive because if you're sitting in front of a lecture hall with a thousand people as is the case in other business courses um, you'll never really get in contact with the professor that closely so that's really like an advantage okay so this is also an advantage i didn't uh, i haven't listed it uh, here but um, this also uh, means that actually uh, due to the small scale that actually uh, we allow for intensive tutoring. When you need uh, to, to, to speak to somebody, there will always somebody available. So there's no issue whatsoever. So especially if you're from abroad and things happen, maybe things happen at home, it's good to have a, have a talk some, sometimes and, and it's possible. Um, we also have excellent uh, uh, study advisors. Um, we have around six of them. Um, so they they always make time for you if you uh, drop by. Um, I hope there are other questions. Otherwise, I round off. Um, so this is. Can you come closer that I can read? Where do international PhD students come from? Uh, the international students. Well, they're di uh, diverse. So uh, uh, it's very diverse. Maybe, maybe you can tell something about it. Um, I have to say, I ha I have friends from like seven different countries at least um i mean there are also dutch students in the international in the english program who are like very international minded um i think the furthest away i've heard of is either taiwan or um australia there are a lot of people from korea actually a couple of u.s students and actually surprisingly a lot of um, south africans as well south africans yes. uh, uh, zimbabwe is a, there's a student from zimbabwe yes. this year uh, so people come uh, uh, from ev everywhere, but also the Dutch students are also in this program because it's very usual. Uh, well, it's 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 it's, it's very usual that that people uh, have a bilingual uh, uh, teaching system or uh, education system. So they have uh, they go to English, partly English and Dutch schools, and they want to go to the international schools here. Uh, so it's very international. Um, we have special relationships with uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, we have connections with Cam Cambridge Education Group. So many people from there are from Asia, basically. Yes. Um, so your study choice. So this is uh, meant as a as an information around a next round of information. So you are or uh, this is part of the orientation that you have. We also have more live events like the bachelor day. Uh, well, it may be hard for you if you're from abroad to be there, um, but then you can uh, visit us, see the campus, uh, see how beautiful it is. Um, there's other means that you can uh, uh, can get your information using the website. Um, the next phase is that you check whether you fulfill the requirements. Um, if you're an international student, then it's just wise to uh, to contact our uh, international office, uh, uh, admissions office. Uh, then you enroll. And once you enroll, uh, uh, sign up, and uh, this should be done uh, before the 1st of April, then you get, uh, we have monthly uh, UVA matching uh, procedure, um, so which is actually compelling. But uh, as I told you before, there's a there's a test involved, but it's it's not saying uh, something about your uh, right to uh, enroll. So the fulfilling requirements, uh, this is a, this has been checked already. So um, it's a non-binding study advice. So this is the way you could uh, could could see it. Okay, I hope that uh, when people have questions that we might have time for a rather small question. Um, otherwise, I would like to thank uh, the people present in, uh, in, uh, in this session. And uh, uh, we hope to see them in the, in the near future. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>